Hello, this is Craig, and this is a tool idea for Unity, um, Unity 4 in, in precise. Unity 4 has a new uh, tool called Mechanim. Mechanim is useful because it abstracts out the bone structure of a rigged mesh so that it can share animations and layer animations with any other similarly rigged structure. The reason this has uh, any value at all is because you don't have to have the same bone names, you don't have to have the same bone structure, you can change it out. Uh, you can, uh, for example, whether or not you have chest bones or whether or not you have hip bones, all of that sort of thing is, um, you can flub it, you can work it in a different way, you can add in extra bones for added animations but not require them if you want to switch the animations over to other characters. In short, it allows you to have a much easier compatibility between characters and animations. So you can create any old animations you want, uh, you can and you can put them on any characters you want, and you can layer them however you want, uh, and in short it allows you this huge amount of, of control uh, over a diverse, uh, over third-party diverse meshes, diverse animations, you can, you, they just work. But if you look in the asset store, people are selling individual pieces of assets. They're saying, well, here is this particular character that I made, and he's rigged to work. Or here is, you know, this particular set of animations I made, and they work fine. Um, if you wanted to, if you're, let's say you're an indie developer, and you go uh, into the asset store, and you're looking for a mesh, and you find this, uh, you know, uh, superhero man mesh, uh, well, fine. That's all well and good. The superhero man mesh is very well made, but um, he's he's a superhero man mesh. Uh, he's not the star of your game. He's not who you had pictured. Um, he doesn't fit the role that you wanted. So even if he works with Mechanim, he's not the person that you actually want in your game. And moreover, he's just one person. Even if you buy half a dozen meshes in a bundle, not more than one or two of them are going to be useful for your game, you know, for you, for the world that you've envisioned in your head, and even then, that's only one or two, and you might need ten, twenty, a hundred. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to hire someone who works for a hundred and fifty dollars an hour to make you meshes of all of your characters? That's ridiculous. Uh, it's especially ridiculous when we already have the tools necessary to let you do all of that work yourself very easily. And you can find those tools in 3D chat rooms. So 3D chat rooms are an aging technology, and I wouldn't want to say that they are uh, uh, popular or useful for very many things. But what they do do is they allow you to create a custom character, and they allow you to, you know, are you, you know, beefy armed with like trogdor arms, or maybe you're short, and maybe you're tall. However you want it to be, it just sits there and applies uh, uh, shape key modifications to the mesh until it's the right shape. And then you can put on like hair and clothes. And it saves that and it uses it whenever you're chatting. Well okay, that sounds good. Why don't we build that? Why don't we build a tool which does that and saves the result into a database? So what you get is this uh, tool which allows you to create an unlimited number of characters and they're all mechanim compatible characters. Uh, they all can be, they're all rigged, and you can just slap controllers down on them, animation controllers down on them, and they just work. So you store this in the database, and then you install into your uh, Unity app the little widget, which is what you'd buy from the store. This, this little widget here is the thing that would be in the asset store. This stuff is all free. This widget is what you buy, buy in the asset store, and all it does is allow you to pull characters out of the database. Whether that means pulling characters you've created out of the database, or whether it means allowing the player to import his own characters. So if you build yourself a little running game, an endless runner, a classic, classic easy game to build, right? And you build him with uh, Froman, superhero of of big hair, um, and Froman jumps around. But you could allow users to log in and use whatever character they want. So maybe they've got their own little character that they use, and it represents them, and they have a connection to it, and they feel strongly uh, about it. And it's as simple as just letting them load it in. The same animation works. You don't even have to change the object. 
the same animation controller simply flat out applies to this new model. So uh, it is literally transparent uh, to, to the developer. The developer puts in whatever character he uses for his development and then he just allows users to slot in their character instead. And it's not difficult. It's just a matter of loading up mesh points and uh, loading up a mesh uh, that's been rigged from a database rather than from a, uh, uh, from a file. Very straightforward. And this also offers a lot of monetization opportunities, both for developers and for uh, the tool developer. And that ranges from the classic 3D chat room monetization tools of allowing you to have different kinds of silly clothes if you pay cash. Uh, or it allows you to do things like, oh, well, maybe you want an ultra-high poly model for your game, and you can, you can have the ultra-high poly models limited to only people who pay, uh, you know, a login fee. Or if you're a developer, uh, you can get into this whole uh, uh, framework, because this is essentially a 3D chat room, so there's no reason not to have the chat room component, a forum or a live chat room or both. Um, you can integrate with that community, and you can say, oh, well, uh, I have this game, and you guys can play it as yourselves, and then you get, like, you know, some sort of shitty gamer point or trophy reward thing, the same sort of thing you'd find on uh, Newgrounds, um, and, uh, and you use your avatars in my games. And you can have the developers work together. So if you have an indie, indie developer uh, who's really impressed with your Big Fro-Man superhero runner, he can use Big Fro-Man in his game with your permission, uh, or as, you know, a cameo. Now, the big difference between this and buying your stuff in the Unity store is that this allows you to get a tremendous variety of characters very easily. You can build the characters as you see fit. You can use characters that your players are building. Um, you can do a lot of things that make it very, very easy to get a wide variety of characters and a deep level of, care of player immersion without adding any complexity to your game. It's just a widget that acts exactly like any other uh, mesh object, any other uh, uh, one, any other of the new mesh, the mesh object, the skinned mesh object, that's what they're called. It's just another skinned mesh object. It's a custom skin, skinned mesh object that you can load up with any character you'd like. You can make your own characters, you can get a stock character, you can let the player put in a character. And you don't have to buy piecemeal all of these pre-made characters that don't fit your image, that don't fit the world that you have in your head. And I like this tool. I like this idea. I know how to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and try. I guess that's it.